there's a lot of you out there that are ready to throw the towel in. I mean, you just have had enough with this condition. And it's almost seeming like it's not ever going to go away. It's just lasting for days, months, and there's some of you years. Well, I'm going to tell you when it comes to managing your stress levels and your mental health state when it comes to your station tube dysfunction, there's a few things you can do. And it's really challenging uh, through this entire process because, quite frankly, your mind has drifted off. It's probably at the point of doubt, severe doubt, chronic doubt, and the ability to heal from this condition. A lot of you are at that point right now where you're just like, I think this is just the norm. I think this is just my way of living right now. I don't see anything or anybody helping me with this condition. I've been to specialists. I've been to doctors. I've spent tons of money trying to figure out how to heal myself or how to get myself healed. And it's just simply not going away. Well, I'm here to tell you there are a lot of things still left on the table, I'm sure. There are things that you could do to do for yourself and you don't have to spend any money. You don't even have to leave where you are. These are things and strategies that I had to kind of develop in order to get over it. Because simply going to the doctors every single time I felt like I was at my worst was not going to get it done for me. There were more things that I needed to fix from the inside in order to heal from the outside. In order to inhibit this sense of un understanding that this is a process and I can get through this. Now, you all are at a point probably right now where you've tried dozens of things. What I'm finding about this condition is because it puts you in this state of desperation. You know, you're in this state of desperation. You're so you, a lot of you contain this this sense of eagerness to and and why wouldn't you? But a lot of you are, that I've run across have this great great skill set of eagerness to not give up on finding the solution, finding the help. And this is what ultimately I started to lose slowly and I can and I feel good knowing a lot of you have already developed your uh, expert A plus skills of not giving up. You are trying to still push the envelope and trying to reach out to the ex experts, you're joining groups, you're being very instrumental. And this is the things that I lacked. I didn't join one group when I had this condition. I didn't think to even go on Facebook or somewhere online and join a group. To be able to engage with others, to find a sense of understanding that way, my mind will start to heal slowly because I know I'm not alone and I know there's an ending. Hearing other people's stories and success stories of how they got over and how they started feeling better and how they're doing well now would, would have ultimately gave me more encouragement, more. It probably would have not had been three years. I could tell you that. It ended up being three years for me because I think two of those years I was being negligent a little. Yes, I was going to the doctor's office. Yes, I was be getting checked out. And I was doing these things very, very uh, repetitiously. But I think there were things that I, were lack that I was lacking. And that's why this video is going to be very valuable to a lot of you. Because in this video, I'm going to explain how your mental health and your stress levels are far greater than anything you're probably doing. If you could just focus on those two, those two aspects, you're going to start healing much faster than if you took a nasal spray most likely or if you did some kind of ear procedure uh, balloon dilation or some kind of ear procedure or something that's going to uh, give you that false hope that it's going to go away permanently and it really doesn't it just takes a lot of your money away a lot of your time and then it gives you that false hope but there are a couple of things when it comes to maintaining your stress levels and mental health levels is there's th there's a couple of things the first thing that I did on the last year of my healing, the last year of me finding a solution, finally, uh, was that I started to take myself out of the concern. I started to take my own problems out of the out of my focal point. Let me give you a little bit of an example. During the course of me going through this problem, I started doing things that were going to help me forget about me and put more energy into others. I started do. Uh, doing charities at my church I started doing um, donations any to anywhere I could at my job where I worked I worked at a, a hospital so there were a lot of donations and a lot of charities where I could get my hands involved in those things and I was getting myself involved in helping others however I could locally or within my 
where I work. So it was very easy for me because these things were starting to come to my doorstep. Some of them were coming to my doorstep, and I was starting to realize, you know what, I'm going to do that. I'm doing that. And then after the first couple of times, I said, you know what, I'm going to start looking for this stuff. And I started going through my church. What can I do to help? Can I do this? Can I do that? And then one of my family members had had an issue, a medical issue, and I was putting my energy into helping that family member get over what they were dealing with. So doing these things, doing what I, what I just told you, it actually elevated my sense of mental worth. It gave me a perspective to understand that I'm needed and I can make a difference. What it did was lower my my focal point of what I was dealing with and, high, and, and heightened my ability to make a difference. And ultimately, I started paying less attention to what I needed and more attention to what the world and what others needed. And I started to forget about my symptoms. And I started to ignore them because I have a purpose now. You're that parent or guardian or whoever you're taking care of or someone you're in charge or someone you're... Uh, in charge to deal with, you know, anyone. It could be it could be a guardian, you could be a parent, someone that you're responsible to deal to take care of. You're going no matter if you're sick, and I've seen parents do this. You could be sick, and your and your kids need these things. They need this before practice. They need that. You're doing all this stuff, and you're sick. And it's not like you're enjoying the process, but you're doing it. You're allowing yourself. To, you're kind of forcing yourself to do all these things because your child, your guardian, your whoever you're responsible for is needing you to do those things. Family member, friends, and you're putting them before you. And I realize when you do that, when you do that with intent, intent intentively, you start to d- d- diminish your thoughts of what you're struggling and what you're lacking. And ultimately what it does is create this energy and this force around that starts to almost say well you're living your purpose of helping others and all of these things you're feeling starts to completely just let off of you and if you're in this position right now where your mental health is is declining and your stress levels are hiking start looking at ways where you could re reposition your focal point reposition to help someone else help someone else in a very intentive way meaning it's very open and very easy to do it these days before you would have to be a part of something an organization a school or a church or at work they would occasionally do it now you can pull up your phone and go anywhere and find places that need help volunteer donations these are things that you can do online you can pull up your app there's apps there's local uh, home apps that you can be a part of like next door and apps online through LinkedIn and places like that where you can literally pull your phone up put volunteer work or donation work and you can start getting involved this was a tactic what I mean by tactic is that you're doing it you're doing it selfishly but unselfishly because the person needs you they need you need they need the help you're doing it not only to to enlighten yourself in hopes that this pays off because yes you want to feel better when a person helps somebody out they might not necessarily want anything in return financially or supportively they want that they want that high of being able to know that they made a difference in someone's life and that is why I said selfishly because that piece of of reaction what you're doing is to me is far more rewarding than someone turning around and giving it back to me later. The, the fact that I was able to redirect this person into a way of good and re, recalibrate them into the good side or help them off that, that, you know, that ditch they, fell, they have fallen into gives me more back than they could ever give me. You know? And so I realized with eustachian tube dysfunction, tinnitus, things in that nature, you are when it when it's seeped into the mental aspect side of things and it's and it's definitely there because you know when it's in when it's when it has reached the end zone of the amount of the mind itself and you know when it's there there are more there there are more things that are needed other than what you can provide to your body on the outside yes it's good to have good diet nutrition good healthy habits exercise uh, good sleep cycles sleep patterns but if you're in the middle of the day and you find yourself at hope, you, that you need hope, and you're finding yourself hopeless, there are things that you 
that you need to fulfill yourself in order to get through what you're dealing with when on the mental aspect side. And I could tell you the biggest thing is refocusing what, why you're doing what you're doing or what your purpose is in this, in this life and start helping someone or a group or contributing. You will see your symptoms start to fade. I promise you it will fade because each day you'll say, wait a minute, I have to go here. I have this to do. I have to go help that person. I have to go donate to this person or I have to go put my time in there. Outside of your 9 to 5, 8 to 5, try to make a time on the weekends. If you can't during the week, make a time on the weekend to find a place or places, animal shelters, uh, find yourself somewhere at a hospital where they need volunteers to escort patients if that is allowed in your area. Um, find yourself in, the, in those directions and you will start to see that those symptoms of your mental health decline and stress level rise will start to uh, dissipate and you'll start feeling so much better because then you take care of the mental side the rest of it will take its place will take over that is one big large piece of information of what could help you get over this thing when it has reached the level of me the mental health side of things chronically it's there now there are those, that is going to be a a very sh extreme vital piece of information and so that is something that I want to tell all of you as what I did again I, I, I did lots of charities and donations and things uh, that will never be publicized or never be posted online by me because it's simply the the moment of in taking it in for myself putting it in here that's what gives me the desire to do it not to film it and things like that so I want all of you to know if that if if you're in that place right now where it just feels dark it feels empty it feels broken try doing that okay there is nothing wrong with seeking the seeking your way into something seeking that 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 need for others in order to help yourself feel better there's nothing wrong with that because you don't want them to give up anything of theirs you just want that you're paying for the feeling so they are not losing anything they're gaining and you're gaining so it's a win-win situation I hope this video was very helpful for you if it was please take time to subscribe to the channel we are growing every single day I'm very happy to have been able to reach many people out here uh, continuously trying to inspire and uh, inspire others out there to do the best they can uh, and if you have seen people struggling with this and it's not maybe it's not you maybe it's somebody else that you know please share this video for them because I'm sure they can get a lot of information out of it I have over 500 videos about you stage tube dysfunction on this channel and I know a lot of that could help a lot of people out there not just for the condition of the ears but on the mental health side of things there's a lot of good details there so I'm gonna go ahead and step out of the jaywall in the studio and leave you in good hands with this video like anything else folks we are here to simply go back to the basics take care everybody